Good afternoon. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Michael Watson and I am the regional lead for Microsoft Reactors in the Asia Pacific. And it is my great pleasure to have you for tonight's session. This is our first of our virtual reactors in the Asia Pacific, uh, where we typically will be featuring across Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand and Indonesia. Uh, today, it's my great pleasure to welcome Job Chanavasan, who is a Associate Cloud Solution Architect at Microsoft Thailand. Uh, he's also a Microsoft Certified Trainer. And uh, we have the great pleasure of him tonight giving us a talk about um, deploying a web app to the container on Microsoft Azure. So without further ado, I will hand over to Job and please be sure to put your questions and chat uh, into the thing. We will uh, have uh, someone monitoring the chat and if there's questions, we will try to get to them or get to them towards the end. But uh, we look forward to your engaging discussions and uh, I will hand it over to you now. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Michael. Okay, uh, hello everyone. So today we're gonna talking about the container. What is container? First of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Yashan Chan Siwanon. You can call me Job. Yeah, as Michael said, um, yeah, I'm 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 come from Microsoft, and today I can I come with Red Hat. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm the for, former full stack developer and the former Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador. Uh, I'm the Chai script, just uh, JavaScript lover, and my life is diving for, with the uh, coffee. Yeah, so let me go to our agenda. Uh, today, we're gonna talking about what is, what, is the, uh, what is the container technology and how it work, and when we're gonna use it, and when we won't use it. And then last, lastly, we're gonna do the workshop, uh, the demo state. Okay, so let me shake some, some, some comment. Okay. Okay. Good morning. Uh, good evening. Okay, so let me go to the first ex uh, episode. So let me understand what what is the container technology. So. Let uh let me give you some example. Let you imagine if you uh, are the developer, you work you work some project alone. You use the Mac OS and use Node.js at the runtime, and you may use the some native lib like um in in Mac OS we 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 gonna use the dialib, and in the one project you gonna have the uh, program and code that use the native lib. And run over the uh, run Node.js Node runtime on the Mac OS. It's gonna be um, not 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 uh, how to say it. It's gonna don't have any problem because you work alone, right? And the problem is gonna happen when you have your team join. And the the second developer they use Windows, and for sure the native lib is gonna change to the DLL, right? And for the long term, luckily we have Node.js on Windows, so it's, it's still be okay, right? But as you see in the native lib, we have the conflict of native lib, right? Because on the Mac OS, we use a dial lib, but on the window, we use a DLL lib. Uh, so when, when you call, uh, call, collaborate development, you may have, you, you may facing with uh, this issue. This is the first, First issue that you met when you do the collaborate or do the development, uh, application development. The next, the uh, the next issue is when you go to the production. Mostly we use the production server that they they may use the Linux or even the Windows Windows server. For sure, they have the different environment. So when you develop the application. Sometimes your application may cannot run on on production server or on the Archer uh, developer computer, right? As you can see, now we have the conflict of native lib in each environment, right? But that is not the end of the world. We still have the Archer issue, like of the file system on the each uh, OS, the uh, difference, and we also have a different kernel, right? So we can conclude that in each 
application, we're going to have the uh, many components. There are OS, program, database, runtime one, two, three, four, five, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, in this term, we, we, we run on the native code machine, right? So in the very first uh, era, we use the VM virtual machine to solve this problem because we gonna we we can simulate each uh, in, in environment at the same same OS. For VM, we gonna provision the computer, the machine, with the guest OS like guest OS. It may be the Linux, Ubuntu, or Windows, or even the Mac OS, right? And and then we gonna install the program. Uh, and the runtime that you have to run with the application, right? So in, it seems pretty good, right? But the guess is, is, is quite big and it's very huge. Let's, let's think about the windows. The window, we, after we uh, do the installation complete, the, the, um, the full size of the OS is gonna be allowed 40 or 50 gigabyte, right? It's quite huge. And when do and we have to waiting for the, its booting. When every time that you would like to start the program, you have to start the VM also. And the another obstacle of VM is VM is consume a lot of um, resources like a CPU or memory. And then you're gonna lacking to to uh, develop the application, right? So nowadays we have the new solution is container based. Oh, can I just the check you? Job, yeah. can I just check, are you supposed to be sharing your screen? Is there supposed to be content on? We can't it, see any uh, deck. Uh, it's first, it's first, right? Uh, I just, just seeing the background. Sorry, that's okay. Okay. How, how long is me like this? We haven't seen any slides. We weren't sure. Oh, so thank you. It's okay. 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 I'm so sorry. So let me share it's the okay. screen again. Thank you. Uh, so. So let, let me uh, catch up some a bit on my presentations. Uh, okay, wow. Okay, we can see the we can see yeah, the slide. Yeah, we, we, we miss okay. a, a lot of uh, slide. Okay, Thank you. this is the the first uh, uh, first developer that we're talking about. They use the Mac OS, right? So we have the three comp uh, four components, right? And when we have the second developer, you can see right. They had a different native lift, right? And when and then we had a production server, we have the alert, we also had a different environment. And besides of native lift, we also had a different file system or even the kernel, right? Um and then <laughs> and then we can can conclude that we have the uh, many components like OS, program, data pad, runtime one, two, three, four, five, and blah blah blah. Like other, uh, other backup services or microservices. And then we saw with the uh, VM or virtual machine, the picture is going to be like this. We're going to frame or we're going to pack it at the uh, one box that uh, running uh, under the uh, guest OS. Yeah. But as I said, as I mentioned earlier, the guest OS is quite really big, right? It's allowed 40 or 50 gigabytes. By uh, one guest OS. So nowadays we have the new technology we call container based, or we gonna or that the technology we are gonna talking about today, right? Uh, we gonna remove the great guest OS that we see in the previous slide, and then we are gonna use the tiny OS instead. The tiny OS is a very very small Linux uh, OS. Uh, mostly we use the the um, Alpi, the size of the, the Alpi is just 10 megabytes. It's, it's quite really far from the guest OS, right? It's allowed well, one, 100 or 1,000 times for, for each OS that, that we gonna can reduce, right? And sometimes in some container, we, we, we may not need to use the tiny OS also, yeah. So we can, we can, uh, we can run as a, on the scratch on like, Okay, when I when I build a container that running only on Mac OS, yeah, we, we can we can do the uh, like Lanetti, but it's gonna in the container environment that we're gonna explain later. 
Yeah, and then we have the container. In one container, we're gonna install the runtime that we we gonna use. For example, if I use the Node.js, the runtime one is gonna be Node.js, right? And the program is gonna be my code. Like, okay, I'm gonna put the Node.js file into it, and then it's gonna run in the back in 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 their block. And when and in the and then we have the container. The picture is gonna be like this. We we're gonna pack each container and then we can uh move them to another computer that install the container runtime. Uh, the popular one is Docker, right? So we can connect the container like 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 this in, like 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 the picture. We can uh, position the database container container and then we're gonna have the uh, another component like okay if we have the or we if we gonna build OS uh or other management system. We're gonna have the uh, another microservice like a uh, order management, user management. We're gonna can separate it as each container that they can scale uh, by themselves in the, as a scale up or scale out. So in each container, they can, they can connect back to database container and they, they won't uh, interrupt each other. For example, if container one fail, Container two still be running, right? And container three still be like processed by themselves. So, so that means your your system might not call up the whole system. Yeah, that's one. And this container is gonna run over the uh, container runtime like a Docker. So, what is Docker? Docker is an open open platform. Just just Docker in itself is a open platform that you can develop or like shipping, running the application over the Docker platform. That like like this picture, you can separate it, uh, your application and the infrastructure that help, help you to uh, build or boost up to your uh, application quickly. Oops. And yeah, the Docker itself, is be like that, but when we talking about its technology, the Docker we have is it run over on the uh, Docker engine. In Docker engine is a is a heart of container runtime of Docker. Docker engine they they gonna contain a lot of tools like a CLI two or Docker API, and they gonna manage the networking itself for you, and and also you can custom. Is there also and gonna do the uh, container service, uh, take care of the volume, do the orchestrations, or even build the image. Docker can run the various of Linux, uh, like Ubuntu, Opi, Debian, CentOS, even the Windows Server. Nowadays, we also have the Windows Server as a container. It also can run over on the Docker engines. Actually, we have the other Docker runtime like a uh, container or launcher, but the Docker is the most popular one. So what's, what, what, uh, what, what Docker, uh, what container can do further? We still be like, uh, do the container like this. We can build each node, like one node, they gonna run multiple container, and then you can do the scale out, like you copy the, the VM into the other VM, and then we're gonna have the another VM we call master node to take care one of them. So that's mean when you adopt the container technology, you can scale out and scale up uh, whatever as you want, like this. So like, this is the, like a concept of the Kubernetes, I think you may be familiar with Kubernetes that we uh, may talking about it later. Yeah, this is what the picture that you can go. So let's see what the container use case be. First, the first one, you can do the lift and ship. If, you come, if your uh, application is support to run on the container, like they don't have uh, many dependencies or they don't need to use the uh, native OS, tools or services, you can do the lip and ship because do the container is, is the fastest way to do the lip and ship. 
because sometimes we run the application in the very old version, right? Uh, in the in the target server or the production server, we do we use the newer version, like we use the Windows Server 20, uh, 21, for example. But now today we still run on the Windows Server 2012. We can do the lip and ship and do the environment like a release uh, closely to the, the current one. We can do a lip and ship. The second, for the application that they need to refactor, because you, you do the refactor, you can, uh, you can change some component, right? So you, in, in that time is quite really good, uh, good time to do the container lights, right? This, uh, when you, you want to do the refactor, it's the best time to do the container also. And the third, is the, the best one, is to develop the new application. You can consider to use the container technology because yeah, as, as you learned before, you can adopt the, like, the portable computer, uh, portable application. You can move your application to uh, another, uh, another computer seamlessly without to install uh, Azure Lantern. And the last one, we can use a container as ad, ad hoc. For example, if I would like to uh, use the MongoDB database, uh, normally we have to install the MongoDB into my own code machine, right? So when we had a new, new version, we have to uh, do the update. And sometimes if my MongoDB fail, it may fail forever. But when you but when we do the container, we can position the Mongo in the container. So when the MongoDB uh, malfunction, you can destroy and then we can build the another MongoDB container again. For in the, for this uh this flow, we're gonna talk it about it in the next next slide. And the last one, sometime. The platform as a service so, uh, or the cloud may not support the lang uh, our language natively, but support container. For example, in the Asia, we have the Asia App Service, right? The Asia App Service, they, uh, they provide to run the, co the code natively. You just copy or you just deploy your code into the App Service, and then they're going to run the stack. You can see this, uh, this is the list of languages that absolutely support. But sometimes the language that we use to develop application is not in this list. But how, how to do it? Luckily, the, uh, the absolute they support containers. So that means you can uh, pack your language that not support on absolute as a container and then deploy into absolute. So today we're going to have that demonstration today also. And when we want to use a container, the first one is an application that requires specific OS service. For example, if, um, if our application, they need to use the native process or the service on Windows, that means this application may not work in the other OS like a Mac or Linux for sure. That means this app, this application may not work. You have to find a, uh, another workflow to remove or replace that, that, that service to let them its container. Second, it's low level chain to the OS. Some application need to do the really low level modify on that OS. Um, we, we not encourage you to, to chain much on the OS on the container because it may call up the container also. So, this one is also cannot be go, go to other container. And the last one for the application that they have only TUI. Uh, the container they're gonna run as a background process or the CLI, CLI application only. They cannot simulate the TUI. So for the application they, that they have the UI, they cannot run on the container. For example, you cannot uh, uh, you cannot pack the Microsoft Word into the container, right? You cannot do, 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 do that thing with the container. And let's be talking about what are the limitations of the container. Sometimes some Docker image may not work across processor architecture. For example, 
my computer current computer I'm using MacBook Air right with the Apple Silicon M1 is the uh, it, the architecture is ARM C, uh, 64v8 the image that I built for my M1 is may not work on the AMD 64 or like the Intel or the normal uh, processor architecture that we use nowadays you have to uh, you have to work, find the other work, work allowed to to build the image to work is a core architecture, and that we're gonna talking about is on today also because I gonna build my Docker image on this M1 computer and then deploy to the AMD uh, 64 processor architecture. Okay, now we understand a lot of container so. If I gonna use container, what I have to prepare? The first one, as, as you can see, is a Docker file. What is Docker file? You can see a lot of line of code. What is Docker file? The Docker file is the file that um, describes what the container have to do before uh, before land or before being the container or be, being the image. For example, in, in this Docker file that I, I, I chose to show you today, in the first line is form. Form is mean, uh, what this container gonna use image form? Um, it's like, what, what the image that we, we gonna use as the source of this uh, images? For example, this one, I use the image name PHP with tag the, co uh, the colon is like a version, version 7.3 with uh, FPM stretch. Is that mean this uh, this Docker file gonna build the Docker image from the PHP 7, point, uh, 7, 7 .3 with FPM technology with OS stretch, stretch OS. And then they're gonna do the next step. If that's live four, it's gonna be, it's gonna copy Put a composer log file and JSON file into the was select world web. You may think, why I have to do this? Because if I don't use, uh, if I go back to use the VM, I just quick copy or run the CP file, uh, CP command to copy the file. Why we have to uh, to use the Docker file? Because sometimes when you have to do the same thing every time, you may lose something and it may not uh, return as unexpect, uh, as you expected. This file gonna do it automatically for you. After we write one Docker file, you can use this Docker every time as, uh, and they're gonna re return the same result every, every time also. You can see the whole, uh, whole Docker file, it can, it's gonna build the one image that can run the PHP applications with uh, install the dependency that I have to use. So to to uh, to write the Docker file, you just imagine what you what the step that you have to do when you have to deploy the application, and then you write into the one one take file the Docker file like this. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna show this one today also. After we have a Docker file, what next? We're gonna build image from Docker file. After we have a Docker file, we just run the command name Docker build. And after it's build Docker file, we're gonna got the Docker image like this. And after that, the Docker image is be like the face of uh face of the result that you after run the Docker file. For example, in the in the Docker file, we we start from the PHP and then copy the, the composer file and source code, and then we're gonna install the many dependencies. So that means the Docker image is the is it is, is a is a like the 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 OS or the machine that already installed this already and it won't it won't uh, install it again after we run the Docker image. After we have the Docker after we had a Docker image, what next? Now we can we can create or land the container from Docker image into the container. 
So now you, it may help you to understand how different between the Docker image and Docker container. The Docker image is the uh, the file that we built for the Docker file, right? But it's not being the machine yet, or or being the process yet. You have to run Docker image, and then we're gonna got the container. If you compare with the VM, it's gonna be like the one VM that running on uh, in in your in your platform. But Docker image is be like VHD file, or like the VHDX file, or the frozen uh frozen OS for you. You just quick start. So it's the same thing in in the Docker file in the Docker uh, technology. You just use the command Docker run with the Docker image name, and then it's gonna boom, got the one container that running in your uh, in your computer with a really low uh, computer resource consumption. Yeah. Okay, so. So let let me go back to a bit to this slide before we go to the demonstration and what is the essential component to uh, build the Docker uh, or the container system. We're gonna focus on the lim limitation. If you don't have the AMD computer, if you don't have the Intel computer, how you build the Docker image? to run it on the uh, other computer that they may not use the um, um, ARM processor. If I have only this computer, yeah, it's, worth, it's advertising time. We can use Azure, Azure DevOps. <laughs> Azure DevOps is a tool that you can uh, pull the code and then it's gonna build Docker file in their existing uh, environment that you can choose what whatever OS you want, even the Windows, Linux, ARM CPU, and even the Mac OS we also support on Azure DevOps. And for sure today, we're gonna use Azure DevOps to solve this problem also. Okay, that's advertising term. <laughs> Actually, it's gonna be suggestion term. Okay, so let me see what is the essential component to use uh, to build a Docker environment. First one is for sure is code or your application. The second is container logistry. Why is the container logistry? After you build the Docker image from the Google file, right, you have to find some place to store your Docker image to let the other machine or even your machine to pull it to run. The, doc the container logistry is is uh is it be it be the place that the Docker image will be stored. And we can do the uh, versioning on the container logistry also. And the third one, th the last one, is also the important thing, is container runtime or the machine that can run the container, uh, can, can, can run the container technology. For example, if you have the machine, that means you, you have to have the machine that already installed the Docker or the container runtime to let it run the Docker image. And as I will be mentioned in the topic of the, uh, this, this section, we're gonna deploy it into the cloud, into the Microsoft Azure. So this is the, the, the services that we're gonna use to deploy our, con uh, our, our container application. We're gonna store the Docker image in the uh, Azure container registry. And then we're gonna use Azure app service with app Web app for container to run the 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 the, the image. Um, and for the code, we can uh, I gonna store the code in the Azure DevOps. Actually, we can store uh, wherever you want, like a GitHub or the GitLab. So you just you can you just so store the code because why why I shoot the DevOps because in the DevOps we also uh, already uh, include the the Azure repo that is the Git system for you. Oh, one thing, Azure DevOps is a free service. You can use free uh free service up to five for uh first five user. So you can build, you can store the code, 
you can just you do the deployment uh, free on the Azure DevOps for first five 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 user. Okay, so now we know what is the container already and how it works and what is the essential component to build the, uh, to run the the uh, container. Now it's deploy time. If you would like to follow my my uh, my section or you would like to do it uh, after the section, it is a prerequisite that you have to prepare. The first one is Azure as subscription. We use for uh, provision the Azure resource like uh, Azure Container GC or even the app services. So before you provision or create those resources, that you have to have the Azure subscription. Uh, for Azure subscription, we have free Azure subscription for everyone. Uh, it's it's uh, 200 bucks for everyone. And for the academics, student or even the uh, instructor or staff, you got another, you also got this, the another uh, free subscription. It's an Asia subscription for student. You can uh, use your academic, your, uh, your academic email to register on the Asia. You're gonna receive free 100 buck uh, Asia credit for one year. And every year that you still be student or in the academic, you can renew every year. So that is a, the, the way that you can use the Azure for free. The second, you have to install the Azure CLI. The Azure CLI is a program that allow you to control or provisioning the Azure resources or even do the author authorizations from the command line. Today, we're gonna use Azure CLI to authenticate to the uh, container logistics also. The third is really important is Docker runtime. The Docker CE is a, con con uh, is a customer edition version. You just download the Docker from, from Docker uh, official website and then you install your in, in your computer. Because we're gonna use Docker, uh, Do Docker CE to, to build the, the, the image and then we're gonna uh, push the Docker email into the logistics. And the last one is also important, is source code for any language. Any language that you use with your application, but if you don't have the application, uh, source code that support container and container yet, I also, uh, I, I also prepare it for you. You can follow this link. So I make copy and press into the chat for you. Um, in the link, okay, let me press in the, uh, the chat. Okay. So um, let me show the, the link for you. This link is gonna navigate you to the Azure DevOps. So you can find the, the code in the repo. So I'm gonna show you uh, pretty soon. So if you would like to open the link, you can follow this link. Uh, it's quite long a bit because I don't I have no idea what what the area that I have to to set uh, to name it for. Okay, so let me deploy. Let me do the container. Well, okay. So first of all, we're gonna open this link in your browser, and then you're gonna you you you're gonna see the screen. Uh, of the Azure DevOps. This is the my Azure DevOps project named Microsoft Active Container Demo. In this project, I I can use the other service like Azure Bot to manage the bot, but in this session, we won't use it. So you can find the code in labels. In labels, I store multiple labels in this one. So in this section, I'm gonna do the demo test for uh, deploy the Golang as a container and the TypeScript as a container. So you can find the source code of them here. Okay, the first one I'm gonna start from TypeScript because we already uh, put in the description of this uh, section, right? We're gonna work walk through with the TypeScript. 
Okay. First of all, you have to clone this this sort code. Let me uh, let me clone this project. If you're gonna follow my uh, my demonstrate, you can do it. Uh, I'm gonna create a new folder. Okay. And then I'm gonna do the content, uh, git clone this project. And I clone this project. Okay. Now, now I have the container, uh, the, the sort code here. Okay. And then I'm gonna open my project. Okay, let, let's see what we have here. Okay, in, in this project, you can see I have the sort, it's a sort code of these applications. This application is the uh, web server application that, that run with the uh, Express. And now, and here we have a Docker file. So, if you already have the application that already run in uh, a bit, uh, how to say, normally in the doc uh, container environment, you just create the Docker file. If you don't have Docker file, you just create it one. And then we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna light the Docker file. Okay, you can, you can compare to the, the left, the left one. We're gonna start from form. This is a this is a required statement that you have to put. Form is like like I said, it means what is the sort image that you're gonna use uh with the application uh, with, with this container Docker 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 image. So I'm gonna decide to use the doc uh node with uh version 16.3 with our power. Okay, before we, before we go further, how do we know where the image we're gonna use? It's really easy. Uh, this image is gonna is gonna is gonna use from the container container registry. Actually, we have the free container registry called Docker Hub. But in the image in Docker Hub for the free tier, you have uh, you you can use just only the uh, uh, the the pub the public 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 Docker image only. So if you would like to do the to store the private private image, you have to to uh use the third plan. Okay, so Hin, if you're gonna find your 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 image that you would like to to use, for example, in this project, I'm gonna use Node.js. Right, you just search in your search engine. Let's Google it and do the node Docker Hub like this. And you can see here the doc hub the docker com. You can see, okay, we have the doc, we have the image name node. For for the security uh reason, you can see this bash. It said official image. So this means this image is uh built for the official distributor. So you can trust this image, and you can and 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 another one you can see the download count, uh, pool pool count is one billion time for this image. And then now now we already know what the image we're gonna use. We go, we're gonna put the node here and then put the colon. Colon it means tag. So the tag you can see from here. From this tab, but uh, mostly the 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 dis distributor we uh, they're gonna put it in the in the uh, description also. So now you can decide whatever version that you want. For this version, I I built the version uh, this application in the node version sixteen point three point one, but but point one is a is a minor version, right? So uh, it's a pet version, so we we don't need to. To uh to to 
to consider about it. So I'm gonna use the uh, closed version. It's gonna be sixteen point three. It's gonna be. Uh, it's not in this list, <laughs> but it's in the tag. It's a. It's a very. It's quite old. Old version. You can see here. Okay. So after the node version, what is Alpine? As I said, the Alpine is the very tiny Linux OS. So I decide to use Alpine as the uh, uh, the base OS. Is Alpine and with Alpine version three point uh, one two. Okay, and next, what we gonna do? I gonna set the work the the work directory. So it's this statement is gonna it's gonna tell the Docker to to set the home part or the work directory to uh this part the part slash home slash no slash app. How do we know? You can uh you can you can read the uh, instruction of each image from 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 the descriptions. So it's gonna tell it's gonna tell you where you have to put the image. You can do down to here. You can see here. And you can see here they, they they store the work directory here. So you just follow follow the guides. And after that, I'm gonna copy dot and dot. The first dot is mean here the the current directory in your host machine. And the second parameter is what is the destination of in the container uh, location. For now, we set work there to home node app. So that means they're gonna copy this code into the uh, home node app for there. And after we copy the source code, uh, normally when we do the uh, Node.js, we gonna install the dependency. And then uh, because I use a TypeScript, so I have I, I have to run the yarn build also. So I gonna run command yarn and then with the command yarn build. Yarn is mean gonna install the dependency. And the last one is gonna run the build command. The build command I gonna run TSC. It's a TypeScript compiler. It's gonna compile my, my TypeScript. Okay, so let me try to run this application with our containers. What it's gonna be. So if I if if I don't use the content Docker container, you just I gonna run yarn, right? It's going to install the node module, and then I'm going to run yarn build. It's going to build the TypeScript, and you're going to have, you could, you're going to got the disk folder here. And then go back to our Docker file. What is the next step? After it's finished, we're going to run cmd yarn start. What is cmd command means? Uh, it means when actually our Docker image already built finished, uh, seen in the line six, but when when we run the Docker image, it gonna run the CMD command. That means if you would like to to start the container, uh, it's gonna it's gonna run this command every time that you start the con container. It's gonna it's gonna run the script yarn start. The yarn start is gonna start my application here. Okay, let 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 me simulate if we don't use container. So after we do the yarn and yarn build, and then I'm gonna do the yarn start. Okay, so this application require a few, a few, uh, few environment variable. So I'm gonna set port because because this application I set to to use the environment variable. You can see from the uh, index.ts file. It's gonna lead for the environment variable. It's gonna use at the the port that application uh, used to listening for. Okay, so after I set the environment variable, it's gonna not be undefined anymore. Let me start. Yeah, start. Okay, now it's listen on this uh, port port three thousand. Now let me try to go to the port three thousand on this. Computer local host port three thousand. Boom. Okay, we got the web. We got a result from this application. 
Okay, it's like normally, but if we would like to to run as a container, we already like we already load the uh, Docker file, right? So we can uh, build the Docker Docker image. To build a Docker image from Docker file, you just use this command: Docker build dash t. T is mean tag. Tag is is gonna be uh, image your image name and and follow with the uh, uh, tag name. For example, I gonna build it, uh, this image name Thai script um, container demo okay. <laughs> with the version 1.0.0. And the last parameter is where is your Docker file store? I gonna set it store here because it's because we uh because we are in the same same the same level same directory with Docker file right so I gonna put dot and then enter and wait for a second it's gonna do the the uh the build process you can see it's gonna follow your Docker file uh Docker file command here you can see the first step it's gonna call form doc uh form node right if we uh if we if we load the image name play like this it's gonna by default it's gonna pull the image from docker.io it's or, or it's a docker hub as a docker image a uh, public image and then the second is gonna set the work there is here right and the third is copy file while we're waiting for build process, let me go back to here. Uh, let's see this one. We have dot docker ignore. What is docker ignore? It means docker, you don't need to copy this file into the container. Uh, in the second statement that it's gonna copy the file, it's gonna ignore this directory and this file. That means uh, this image won't copy node module and dot env file into the container. Okay, now we got the Docker image already, it's already built, right? So it's successful, right? Now we can see the image that's stored in this host machine. It's not in on the container registry yet. You just run Docker images and you can see the image in your computer. It's here that you just built. If you use the Docker, uh, Docker desktop, you're gonna have Docker dashboard. You can see it at the interactive versions. But normally in the very first Docker, we use only CLI, right? But now they, we, we have the easy, easier one is a Docker dashboard. Oops. Okay, my computer is not working normally. Okay, I, I'm gonna show it later up after it show. It's okay. Okay. Okay, after that, we can see the image here, right? So next step, we're gonna run we we're gonna run run container or, or QA container. You can follow this step from my presentations. Okay, let, let me show my presentations. If you can remember this light, this light. We already we already finished this step and this step, right? We already load the Docker file and then we already built the Docker image. Next step, we're gonna create a container. So we're gonna use command Docker run. And then follow with your image name is TypeScript dash container dash dash demo dash day with version 1.0.0. And actually just just this, but this application needs to export the port. Because uh, normally when you start a container, it's gonna run in, in the environment, in, in right? So uh, you cannot remote or access that network. Uh, Normally, so you have to put the the parameter p and follow with the port that you're gonna use in this host machine. I'm gonna use port t thousand three, and the remote container port 
I'm gonna point port to the port 3000, and the second one we're gonna uh, put the uh, in environment name, uh, environment variable the port at 3000, and this application they I require for Spotify to token. Okay, now you may confuse why, why why we have to use Spotify token. I'm gonna show it later. Show you now, and I'm gonna use token from Spotify that I store in my computer. Okay, wait a second. It's gonna start. Okay, now application start. Uh, okay. Uh, while while we while we uh, we do the 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 this step, the Docker the Docker Docker desktop also already opened. Is here. This is a Docker dashboard. You can see your images from here and uh, doc, doc, uh, Docker container that uh, are running. Okay, now, so we're gonna run, run again. Okay. And we're gonna run this command, the run with this command, right? Okay, so, in the Docker desktop, they're gonna show the container that just initiate, right? Now we're gonna try to access the application. As, as you can see, um, we change the port to, for the whole port is 3003. Now we access to the container already. And then let's try to use the application. Oops, <laughs> it's 400. Is unauthorized because it, my token is already out there. Uh, let me update my token for six. Okay, I got a new one. So let me stop it applications one second. And then a new environment variable and then run the container again. Okay now the application should work normally. Okay, now it's perfect. Uh this application they're gonna call the data from Spotify. Uh, this part I gonna call for the copay top tax. I think you already know what is uh who who is copay right? Uh, copay is an artist right? The artist band. Yeah. So you you can see this the this application is work perfectly, and this API is gonna call my Spotify top artist like this. Okay, now it's work. Um. I, I saw that, that our time is gonna running out. So I gonna script to the another uh, demo is the Golang. So how how we gonna pack the Golang as a con container? Uh, we gonna do is one again, we gonna clone the project once again from, from the Asia repo. Uh, and then we go back to Golang, right? And then we gonna clone it again. Git clone. Oops. Okay. Now we got the Golang. Uh, this source code I I also already provided the the sample of Docker file. Uh, for for the developer who who wrote the doc, the Golang, uh, you you may know already what. The, what the step that you need to use. In this step, I use the Golang with all pile and we set the work there. So why 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 we have to set work there like this? Uh, you have you can read the instruction from the Golang uh, image description from the Docker Hub. Golang Docker Hub like this. Okay. So for anyone who don't know what is a Golang is, the Golang is the 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 quite really popular. It's another 
uh, popular language that built by Google, right? And yeah, they they do really great on the uh, computer resources con- utilizations, but unfortunately, it's not support in the app services. It's not supported natively, so that's why we decide to do the container. Actually, we can deploy the uh, Golang as the code on the app uh, app service, but you have to do some a bit configurations. Uh, you can find its instruction from here. If if uh, whoever you well, whoever want to deploy the Golang application into the app service as a, as a code, it's not a uh, Without the container, you can follow these instructions. They're going to show you how to config your UHA your uh, app service. OK, for the Golang image, you can see the instruction here. You, you, you can see from here, they, they set the work there here, and then copy your code. OK, so let me do the build process. We're going to build the Docker image, right? So we use the same. Same command, docker build with tag. I'm gonna use Golang container demo day version 1.0.0. Docker file here. And then you're gonna saw something. Hold a second. Oh, actually, it's gonna work normally because this image. Is work uh, at the uh, arm, arm, arm architecture. We can see from here. Oops, oops. We're gonna. I'm gonna show show you something. You can see the architecture of your Docker from here. I'm gonna inspect the Docker image. It's gonna show a few, a few. Uh, show the details. You can see here. You, the architecture is ARM sixty four. It cannot work uh, directly on the Azure app service. You have to build this image uh, from the computer that run um, uh, uh, Intel or AMD sixty four technology. But luckily, we have some work allowed. You can use this command when you build. Okay, I'm gonna. Put this one AMD sixty four. I I gonna build another another one of images, uh, and then you put this uh, this parameter. It's gonna let me see. You just put the parameter platform, and then space Linux AMD sixty four. It's gonna build this image. As architecture of AMD sixty four, but as I tried yesterday, it failed. Uh, okay, now it failed. You can see here. Oh, okay, it just stopped. Uh, you can you can see here the uh, the the error is here is is a code. Um, uh, this is a bug on 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 uh, Docker was um Apple C conversions, so it cannot build this image yet. Uh, as a AMD sixty four yet, so we have to find the another machine to build this application, or we're gonna use Azure DevOps to build this machine. But for the Node.js, is work perfectly fine. Uh, let 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 me see this one. For the TypeScript, I can run that command perfectly. Linux AMD sixty four. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna take time too long. So I gonna script it, but it's it's work for for the Node.js this uh for Node.js this version this tag this image tag. So, but if your computer cannot build for example for the Golang project, you can use the DevOps to to do the uh build process. In the Azure DevOps, we we provide the CI CD. Uh, is uh, used to build and deploy, right? So for CI, we're gonna use PyLine. Okay, let me see in this one. Job, I just wanna- The advantage of the, 
Yes. Job, I just want to let you know that we've um, we're getting close to time. We've still got okay. fifty people, fifty odd people watching. So uh, you can go for another few minutes, um, but uh, mm -hmm. maybe start to to close up some of the things. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 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 Thank you, Michael. I can let it quickly. So in this process, you can use the uh, Azure DevOps tribute and push the image into a, your registry, right? And then we're gonna use it to deploy into the Azure directly, like this. Like this. Oh, for this one, I deploy to TypeScript. We can use uh, the, the Azure DevOps to build the CICD as a drag and drop version like this. You just drag and drop. Yeah. So uh, what, what, how, how, how do we uh, specific the architecture or the computer to build this, this, com uh, this image you can see on this one, the agent specifications. You can use the various of image, uh, agent versions. You can show the Mac OS also, the, the newest version also. And then before we do or run this, uh, this byline, you have to set up the uh, Azure portal, Azure resources first. I'm gonna go quickly to my Azure portal and uh, what the resource that you have to put provisions. Uh, while we're waiting for the uh, the Azure portal, you can see this one, this slide. So we're gonna we're gonna position the Azure container registry and app services. Okay, so first of all, you just type in the search with the container registry. Like this, and then you create a new one. Yes, just qu quick create and uh, name, and then you type the name of your container registry name, and then the second resource set that you have to provide tuition is app services. The same thing you just search in the search bar with app services, and then quick create, and then name your resources here. Uh, you should the group, resource group. The resource group is be like a directory, like a folder that store all resources that, uh, how to say, uh, related. ML reactor, like this, actually. Okay, and then I'm gonna name it, like um, Golang. This is a unique name, you have to put it here. Golang, uh, one, and then in this option, you have to choose the Docker container and use your operating system that run this container. Mostly we run the container as a Linux, but for the window operating system, it's gonna uh, only for the Docker image, window, uh, window image, like the Windows Server call or something like that. And the Legion is the Legion that you're gonna le deploy your application. And the last one is Service Plan, it's gonna, it's, a, it's a gonna be like, the server that we're gonna deploy the application. And go to next step, the second, that is you choose the email source. We're gonna choose from Azure Container Registry. For this one, I have the Jitashai Registry. So I'm gonna show my uh, already built images. Uh, to, to push, to, to send your image into the, into the registry, you just use And it looks like we may have lost Job. And so with that, our apologies, his internet may have dropped, but uh, we will wrap up and uh, and we will be sure to um, have this video up on YouTube. So uh, please follow on YouTube and uh, we will go from there. But th thank you everybody and apologies for the abrupt ending.